The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Indigo Disc DLC is coming out in two weeks, and after various previews, data mines, and trailers, we've gotten a good idea about what Pokemon are going to return. We've confirmed the likes of Incineroar, Excadrill, Porygon 2, Metagross, and many more, including the legendary Beasts of Johto. Today, let's talk about 30 of the most notable additions returning, and how strong I believe they'll be in the terrestrialization format of Gen 9 VGC. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. But first, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTED at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the returning Pokemon in the Indigo Disc DLC. Now, the Pokemon that I have here, I've only got 30, um, and that's because I limited it to notable VGC Pokemon, and ones that I think can actually do something pretty interesting with the new terrestrialization mechanic. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see uh, basically just a few of the uh, big Pokemon that are going to be returning in the DLC, how much I think they're going to matter. That sort of thing. If you guys enjoy, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and uh, let's get into it. I probably already said all this stuff in the intro. Uh, but yeah, 30 mons right here. Venusaur is a big one. Now, Venusaur is a Pokemon uh, that has a pretty long history in VGC. Actually, I'll be dropping a video about it um, probably tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, Venusaur is a grass poison type from Gen 1, and it has access to the ability Chlorophyll, which is pretty huge for its viability. This is because Venusaur uh, has... It's, it's weird, right? Venusaur's like entire viability comes from chlorophyll. And, and that's because its stats are just like kind of bad. 80, 82, 83, 100, 180. It's, it's like an extremely average Pokemon. But what it makes up for in, or it makes up for its stats in its coverage with uh, access to weather ball, uh, sludge bomb, even earth power. So yeah, basically weather ball in the sun turns into a fire move, uh, 100 base power. Sludge bomb is a great stab. You also have leaf storm. Uh, but the biggest thing for VGC, of course, is going to be Sleep Powder Focus Sash sets. And now, Torkoal has already shown that it's like a huge Pokemon in VGC uh, with its ability to activate Protosynthesis and stuff. But I just want to point out like this hypothetical combination of Pokemon that you can actually use in probably Regulation F. So, of course, you have Torkoal setting the sun. Uh, Walking Wake is most likely going to be legal once we have access to the other uh, legendary Paradox forms. Uh, and also, you know, Venusaur is going to be here that also that also benefits from the sun. And of course, Fluttermane. Like these four are already like super threatening just as a concept. Landorus also fits, uh, fits pretty well onto this combination of Pokemon since it takes reduced damage from uh, water moves at the sun. And of course, I don't know, like a final Pokemon. You would want maybe Incineroar, maybe like a Trick Room Setter. Uh, let's say, let's just say like Cresselia for now. Why not? And you can see like this combination of Pokemon is already like terrifying. Just, yeah, uh, Venusaur is also kind of a decent answer to Urshifu Rapid Strike, and that's because it's going to outspeed every variant of Urshifu Rapid Strike as long as Tailwind isn't up, uh, and it's going to allow you to go for a super effective grass move, whether it be an Energy Ball or a Leaf Storm, which is a little bit more common. And yeah, uh, Venusaur is also going to be able to maintain its Focus Sash, despite being faked out without having to like use Protect with Terra Ghost, which is something that we see on things like uh, opposing like Chen Pao and uh, occasionally a Tornadus, but, uh, and obviously the Hisui and the Ligant teams that have been running around with Torkoal next to them. So that's pretty huge. Like, I mean, like, th this is going to be a phenomenal Pokemon in VGC. Next up is Metagross. I think I'm actually really excited for Metagross. I'm actually like kind of terrified for it as well. It's got crazy stats it's 80 HP, 135 attack, clear body, so it can't be intimidated, uh, 130 defense, 90 special defense, 70 speed. It also has access to Bullet Punch, meaning it is a pretty decent answer to Terra Fairy variants of Fluttermane, and that's why I'm like super excited for this guy. I think this is actually going to be a decent check to Fluttermane. Fluttermane, as good as it is, um, it's going to have to have some answer to a priority steel move. Yes, Scizor was always available, but Scizor is going to be like a Pokemon that you can intimidate. It's a Pokemon that has a huge weakness to Chiyu that even if like you Terra, it still doesn't appreciate the matchup because it requires a Terra. Meanwhile, uh, Metagross, while it is a Steel type, it does have serviceable special defense that you can Assault Vest and it's not times four weeks. So you could actually Calc to live a Chiyu Heat Wave, I'm pretty sure. You know what, let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, I can't even get Metagross in this damage calculator. Whatever, I'm not going to do that, but I'm fairly certain you can Calc to live a Heat Wave. 
Uh, Terra Water is obviously going to be like a pretty decent Terra for it. It's going to allow you to resist uh, the fire type moves coming out into you. Terra Grass is interesting. You're going to still be weak to fire moves, but you're going to be able to resist uh, ground moves and be immune to Amoongus Spore. So under Trick Room, you operate a lot better. Also, this guy has access to like Meteor Mash and stuff. And yeah, no, it's actually just like a really solid Pokemon in general. Um, it does get Hone Claws. It doesn't really run Hone Claws though because it doesn't need to boost its attack. Uh, we've seen lots of variants of Metagross be like really great in VGC. Even like Choice Band is a really scary set uh, because of just how immediate and hard to reduce that damage is. Its biggest issue is Urshifu Dark, which if Metagross picks up in usage, Urshifu Dark is going to pick up too. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I really like Choice Band. Choice Band was one of my favorite sets just because you're able to just come in and go, all right, you know, Meteor Mash, you drop, you drop, you drop. You can also do Iron Head, of course. It's a little bit less power, uh, but you also can't miss. And yeah, um, Earthquake is a decent option for it. It also should get Stomping Tantrum, I'm pretty sure. Stomping Tantrum. Did it get High Horsepower? I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It doesn't, no, no. So it does have to run Stomping Tantrum. And it's also a decent Pokemon into Incineroar. Despite the fact that you are Fire Weak, you are in, you're immune to Intimidate, so you're going to be able to go for Stomping Tantrum after they fake out you and get double damage on that. So it's like actually a really solid Pokemon for that option. Next up is Smeargle. Now, Smeargle is a Pokemon that I'm sure no one's really seriously looking forward to, but I will say that open team sheets do help out in the Smeargle matchups uh, when it comes to, you know, real competition. Uh, however, in closed team sheets, Smeargle is going to be a menace. I just got to point this out. Smeargle's best set is typically just like this. Um, yeah, you run like a Timid Nature, or I guess Jolly Nature. Who cares? Like, you could... Technically, since you're not dealing damage with Fake Out anyways, I like to go Timid and Zero Attack because I don't really care about the Fake Out damage. Uh, and then you run Spore, Follow Me, and Spiky Shield. But you also have other options for Protect now. Uh, over Spiky Shield, sometimes people would run like Crafty Shield, which would protect you and the allies from status. That's actually a pretty decent move uh, that not a lot of Pokemon get nowadays. I actually don't even know if it's still in the game. Uh, other moves that Smeargle has access to one that really interested me was Silk Trap. Silk Trap is protect, but it doesn't protect from non-damaging moves. And if you make contact with it, you get minus one speed. That's kind of cool. I don't know how big it's going to be, uh, but that is pretty interesting. Uh, there are other forms to protect this gen. Uh, King Shield is a pretty decent one. It only protects from damaging attacks as well. Uh, but also, there's other moves that this guy just gets that are pretty insane this gen. For one, Revival Blessing. I mean... I think it needs Protect, but if you don't want to run Protect, I, I what would you drop here? You would probably drop, honestly, either Spore or Follow Me, because you would want Protect, right? The reason you would want Protect on this set would be because, basically, you aren't going to outspeed a lot of things if you're running Focus Ash, you'd have to run like Scarf, right? Uh, but you're not going to outspeed a lot of things, and that makes it so you have to fish for the Moody Boost, and... I think you just need it, you know, like it, there's a, there's gonna be a lot of situations where that's your win con where it's like, okay, you know, I have like a Scarf Kyogre in the back or whatever, and I can win if I get the Revival Blessing off. However, I'm facing down like um, a Rayquaza and a, a freaking Groudon or whatever, and you're just like, okay, let me go for the Protect. Let me see if I can get the Speed Boost. Yes, I got the Speed Boost. And now let me just go for the Revival Blessing and bam, you win. Obviously, Terra Ghost is gonna be the most common Terra for this guy. You could also go Terra Dark though, if you really want to, because it makes them immune to Prankster haunt uh however we have also seen stuff like mental herb in the past so you could do like terra ghost and mental herb sort of like tornadoes runs uh, pretty interesting pokemon I'm trying to think what other absurd moves it gets this gen i don't know i don't know there's there's just a lot of things it can do it's it's a pretty terrifying pokemon court change could be interesting i really doubt it would run it over like the standard set destiny bond is also an option i don't think you would ever run dire claw like that's already a move you just fish for like weird stuff with um, Encore is something I've seen once in a while, but not like terribly often. And yeah, um, just like a terrifying Pokemon that people have to deal with now. It learns every move in the game. I don't know, maybe maybe run Salt here if you want to get crazy with it. <laughs> but yeah, no, Smeargle's terrifying. Whimsicott is a Pokemon that I genuinely do not look forward to. And I was actually talking to uh, James Evans the other day about this. And I think it was either him or NJ that said, imagine you, or it could have even been, it could have even been Luca. We said, like, imagine, like, you open up Gen 9 VGC after the DLC comes out, and all of a sudden your Whimsicott doesn't have Prankster, and they give it Wind Rider instead. Now, I'm going to say something. I would love for that to happen. Not because I think it would be a better Whimsicott, 
but because it changes Whimsicott, where it has to use its speed to set up Tailwind and it's no longer an obnoxious Pokemon. I think Wind Rider is unironically something that would fix Whimsicott conceptually, where I would no longer hate it. But unfortunately, that's probably not the reality we live in. It's probably going to be Prankster Sash, like always. Once again, a phenomenal Terra Ghost Pokemon. Uh, but this one is like Tornadus, but scarier. So if your Tornadus wasn't running Terra Ghost Mental Herb already, if you were Covert Cloak Pilled, um, what was it? If you were Covert Cloak like Terra Dark, uh, I, I regret to inform you it's time to start running Mental Herb because this guy's 116 speed has access to a faster taunt, has access to Tailwind, has access to Fake Tears, Encore. It is a very annoying Pokemon. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't look forward to facing this guy. It's probably going, it's not going to overtake Tornadus. It's never like completely overtaken Tornadus as a Tailwind setter, but it's a Pokemon that could hypothetically do it just because of its higher speed. It can shut down Tornadus pretty effectively. You have to burn a Terra on Terra Dark to avoid the taunt if you're not running Mental Herb, which means Mental Herb is going to be like the number one item on Tornadus from now on. Uh, Covert Cloak stocks down the drain. Yeah, scary Pokemon also gets like helping in and stuff. Um, and as for the stab, you know, it does have Moonblast, it does have Energy Ball. Uh, there was even like one Whimsicott, and this doesn't matter for like modern VGC, but back in 2017, um, there was a Whimsicott, I believe it won Worlds, with Nature Power and a Z move, because like Z Nature Power was a prank, it was a prankster uh, boosted attack, which is pretty cool. Okay, Incineroar. Incineroar is a Pokemon that is actually really huge for VGC, obviously, it is the face of VGC with Fake Out, Flare Blitz, Parting Shot, and then your filler move. It can be whatever you want. It can be Roar. It can be Darkest Lariat. It can be Knockoff. It can be Throat Chop. Yeah, it does everything. Um, I feel like I don't need to explain why it's so good, but I I'll do it anyways, right? So Incineroar has phenomenal bulk. 95 HP, 115 attack, 90 defense, 90 special defense, 60 speed. Um, there are a lot of Pokemon this gen that could check Incineroar. King Gambit is actually not bad with Terra for checking Incineroar because, you know, if you, if you parting shot a King Gambit, you know, GG, uh, they get that defiant boost and they win. Uh, if you intimidate it, it's kind of rough. Um, but mainly, I think Annihilate is something that is literally made specifically to check Incineroar. Uh, it's immune to fake out, it's a fighting type, it gets defiant, uh, it gets stronger the more you hit it, so if they fake out it, it's like, okay, whatever. Um, and yeah. But Incineroar generally is like a really strong Pokemon. I like Safety Goggles Incineroar personally. Um, and I do like running Snarl as my final move. Because it's just like a really great damage reduction Pokemon. You give it enough speed where like you outspeed most Iron Hands. A lot of Iron Hands aren't going faster than like a 92 at absolute maximum. So maybe like hit 93. Um, and yeah, just give it like bulk from that point on. If you want to run like an Adamant Nature. I don't recommend it because you don't really like need that. I would I would recommend you go for like more of the defense boosting Incineroars. You could do like this and get away with it. And that's just like an all right Incineroar spread. You can literally build Incineroar any way you want as long as it has good bulk and then you'll like get away with it. As for Terra, uh, I think Terra Water Safety Goggles is going to be the best one for it just because it allows it to get the most bang for its buck. It's going to resist Urshifu through Rapid Strike. It no longer really cares about that guy. Uh, you're going to be immune to Amoongus Spores. And it's just like a very safe pivot Pokemon. So Incineroar, forever one of the greatest Pokemon of all time. Entei is a Pokemon I'm extremely excited for after having a conversation on Discord with some people. Um, and that's because Entei is another Dragonite. So there are three Dragonites in this gen. And it's Dragonite, um, Arcanine, and Entei. <laughs> so what I mean by that is it's an extreme speed user next to Chien Pao. Uh, also Rayquaza is a Dragonite, but it's objectively worse than Dragonite if you're using it for that purpose. Inner focus means that you can't be faked out, uh, you can't be like flinched, and you also can't be intimidated. This guy is already one of the best choice band users, and we saw that in the non-Dynamax uh, formats of Gen 9, or Gen 8, uh, for those few seasons where Dynamax was banned, I believe it was Series 8, uh, and yeah, or Series 10. This guy, right, a hypothetical moveset for this guy, literally just, you could have it outrun Incineroar, or ha you could have it outrun uh, Urshifu if you want it to, Urshifu's 97 speed, so what, it would be doot, doot, and then you outspeed Urshifu, I'm pretty sure, if you go Jolly. I don't know, something like that. Uh, and then just max out the attack, give it some bulk, and then you run Choice Band, Sacred Fire, which has a 50% chance to burn, you run Extreme Speed, uh, you run Stomping Tantrum, and then like your final move, it would be a decent Terra Blast Pokemon, but there are also other options, you have like Iron Head, 
You have Stone Edge, which is also a pretty good one. And it just becomes a very difficult Pokemon to switch in on. As for the Terra type, Berry isn't bad if you're running Terra Blast, but I think Terra Normal E-Speed is going to be the go-to. Just because it's a 115 attack Pokemon, it hits just as hard as Hisuian Arcanine. Because Hisuian Arcanine is 115 as well, right? Let me double check that. Yeah, it's 115 as well. It hits, Hisu it hits as hard as Hisuian Arcanine, but the difference is, is it's faster than Hisuian Arcanine. It can threaten a one-shot at Hisuian Arcanine, and it has... Um, and it can't be intimidated or like faked out. So it's basically Entei is what would happen if Hisuian Arcanine and Dragonite had a baby, right? Like this is the middle point between those two extremes um, where Hisuian Arcanine, you have like the just utility of it. You have like the lower attack, but uh, in exchange for that, you just have like better bulk. Um, and then like Dragonite, you just have like the I can't be like intimidated aspect of it. Entei is like the middle child but it also has sacred fire which means it can burn stuff and it's 100 base power fire move so you also don't take recoil from flare blitz so that's like a huge thing for it suicune i actually see being a decent pokemon um ever since urshu rapid strike got introduced into pokemon suicune's been like a little bit better just because it's like a decent check to urshu rapid strike not a check but like a wall in in some ways and that's because it has 100 hp 115 defense and like just decent stats all around like it, it hits it hits a lot of benchmarks where it just lives everything. It doesn't care about damage. Um, a few sets, leftovers. Uh, the biggest thing for it, obviously, is inner focus Tailwind. It doesn't really care about being faked out. It's probably going to be one of the few good non-prankster Tailwind Pokemon. Uh, it also has access to, access to Icy Wind, and I really hope they give it Scald. I think that they are going to give it Scald. I don't see Suicune not getting Scald. Uh, it's, it, it has like Milotic vibes where it just needs Scald to function. But if it does get that, yeah, it's going to be great. If not, probably not. You would have to run like Hydro Pump and you don't want to do that. Maybe it'll get like Muddy Water or something, but no. I'm hoping for Scald. Uh, as for that final move, Protect is fine. You can also run Calm Mind uh, as your final one. And you don't typically run Rest on these guys. But if you did, you would have to run like, you know, Chesto. And that's not really a set that people do. But yeah, um, 85 speed isn't bad. You're going to be able to outrun like every Incineroar ever. So if they're hitting like 93, well, guess what? You're hitting... 107 whatever <laughs> um as for defensive terra types i think fire is actually pretty decent for it uh dragon is also pretty good actually dragon wouldn't be bad yeah no i'm, I'm leaning more towards dragon uh that's gonna allow you to resist every single variant of ogre pond except for the rock one which you don't get hit super affected by anyways um and just as like a water type you're weak to grass and electric dragon resist those two uh and that's going to allow you to be a very bulky pokemon that's very difficult to take out so yeah Raikou is an interesting one. Raikou has really good speed and really good special attack, but it typically isn't really like a special attacking role. What Raikou tended to do, at least in Generation 8, was it was a dual screen setter, and that was weird. That was a weird time. So you would run like Light Clay, and you would do like Light Screen, Reflect, Snarl, and like Volt Switch, and it was just an unfake outable dual screen setter i don't know what it would do this gen sometimes obviously it had like offensive options too but like that was usually it it's weird that they gave that thing scald it you know gen 8 and gen 9 are polar opposites gen 8 everything got scald gen 9 nothing gets scald that's just funny uh but it also has like weather ball and stuff um does it get eerie impulse it does that could be kind of decent over um over snarl but yeah raikou tends to just feel like a weird support role terrakion i don't see it being that great However, in Dynam not in Dynamax, uh, however, in Terrestrialization format, it can do a lot better than it would otherwise. So Terrakion tends to get paired with Whimsicott for side beat up stuff. It's basically, you know how like, <laughs> you know how um, Annihilate plays with Mousehold? Uh, Terrakion is like Annihilate's like grandpa was like, back in my day, we got attack boost from that. And then he's like, shut up, old man. Um, yeah, Terrakion would likely do the same thing, but it just, it runs like Rock Slide. Um... You would see like Life Orb, Scarf, whatever, but it's just like a decent rock type. Um, it's very hard to get a good rock type nowadays. Jolly Terrakion hits a really good speed tier, has really good bulk. It's like, it's actually pretty good into like the genies. Not not Landorus, obviously. Landorus really, really messes up Terrakion, but the other two genies, notably Tornadus, because um, Thunderous is like MIA this generation. Uh, but yeah, Rock Slide, Close Combat, Iron Head is like a decent move. Poison Jab is also pretty good. I think this Shen would run Iron Head to hit Fluttermane since Poison Jab is neutral on Fluttermane. Uh, and then just like Protect, but also like Assault Vest is a decent one. Does it get Swords Dance? It does get Swords Dance. So you could also do something crazy with that. Hobaleon. 
Uh, Cobalion, I don't see being all that great. However, I think that Iron Crown will probably be good, so I look forward to that. I, I just want to put him on here because he's notable. But it has been like a decent like Assault Vest user. You could also do like the Justified thing next to it, um, but it would run like, you know, Jolly Nature, enough speed outs be like base 100s. You would run like Rock Coverage to beat like Charizard and stuff. Um, actually, does it get Rock Coverage? What am I thinking of? Oh, it was Stone Edge. It was Stone Edge. I was like, I thought I got Rock Slide for some reason. No. If you run like Close Combat, Iron Head, Stone Edge, uh, Poison Jab. And it, it's got like a low attack, which is why it needs like the Justified stuff. Um, but you can use it as like a special attacker too. It's it's whatever. Virizion has only ever seen usage like once in a blue moon. And I think it was like in Assault Vest Virizion back in 2016 to beat Kyogre. And even then it didn't do the job that well. 90-90, you know how it is. Uh, it has access to like Leaf Blade. Uh, I believe it also gets like Psycho Cut. No, it doesn't. It has runs in Headbutt. That's so bad. That's so bad. Why wouldn't you give it that? He's got swords. Anyways, Superior. This is one I'm pretty excited about. Um, I think Superior has a lot of potential in Gen 9. Just as like Terra Fire as a defensive Terra is like really good for it. Uh, you would probably run Leftovers, Contrary, and Leaf Storm, and Terra Blast. Leaf Storm, Terra Blast, Protect, and your final move, what would you run? Like Dragon Pulse? The thing that balances Superior is that it needs to get set up and also doesn't have a lot of coverage. So becoming a fire type and having Terror Blast is pretty cool. Uh, you can also do like ground, I hit, I think, to hit like Heatran or even water. Basically, just being able to do Terror Blast stuff is what it needs. Uh, you would probably hit like a decent benchmark and special attack at level 50. You'd, you'd hit one of the bumps, right? So like, let's see. So 17, 18, 19, 21. So 116. You would outspeed like base 100s, even base 101. I don't know what's base 101. I'm thinking of something, but I can't remember it. You'd outspeed like base 100s, um, and then you would just put the rest in the bulk. And then that's going to allow Superior to do what it needs. It's going to go for Leaf Storms. It's going to get plus two every time it goes for those. You're going to be able to click like Terra Fire, Terra Blast for some decent damage. And even though its special attack isn't that high, every time you click Leaf Storm, it just it, it becomes a nuke. Like the first Leaf Storm hits decently hard because, you know, it's a one... Uh, 30 base power move that's supposed to lower your special attack as a drawback but because your contrary it goes up then the second storm uh just hits everything and then the third leaf storm just ko's everything and then you have terra blast's coverage it's a cool pokemon it's a cool pokemon it does decent into urshifu because of its good bulk 75 95 95 um and it also just outspeeds it so you can like farm urshifu if you really want to terra water might actually be better the more i think about it because it does let you hit heatran um and it also allows you to resist uh urshifu plus chen pao leads so actually, no, now I'm leaning more towards Terra Water if I think about it. Yeah. Speaking of water types, Primarina. This is a cool Pokemon. It's a very cool Pokemon. It really only sees usage if Tapu Fini isn't in the game. And currently, Tapu Fini isn't confirmed. So I'm going to assume that it's not going to be in the game, even though I really, really want it to. So if if it isn't in the game, Primarina stocks are like way up. Um, there's a lot of sets that can run Life Orb for immediate damage, Throat Spray for, um, you know, later damage. But you'd run like Liquid Voice, Hyper Voice... Moonblast or Dazzling Gleam. Sometimes both if you're running like Assault Vest. And then whatever you want, really. Scald was like a really good move for it. Um, has other utility moves like Encore and stuff. But yeah, basically this thing was just like a really good tank. You would see like Assault Vest sets a lot. Oh, let's go with this. I guess you would run like Terra Blast in this gen. Terra Blast. Uh, if you're a Water Fairy type, a, the best Terra for you is probably Grass. Uh, so... You run like Terra Blast Grass here, and then Modest Nature, hit a decent bump here, probably. Let me go to level 50 again. Yeah, like one, 108 would do it. Uh, invest in like your Fizz Def. And do like that. Yeah, and that's just like a decent Premarina set that you'd be able to get away with. Uh, it's a cool Pokemon. Uh, I mean, it does well on like Trick Room. It pairs well with Incineroar. Uh, it was, like I said, it has, Tapu Fini has to not be in the game for this guy to see any usage, but it's still like a notable Pokemon. Porygon 2 is one that I'm really, really excited for because Porygon 2 and Incineroar being in the same game slows down the game, usually to the point where it's like a crawl. But in this gen with so many hyper offense tools, it's just going to make it like good. <laughs> it's just going to make it like a good game. Uh, but yeah, so analytic and download and trace are all phenomenal abilities you typically run download you always run eviolite because it allows it to tank every hit and your usual moveset is like recover trick room 
and then bolt beam, so like thunderbolt and ice beam. However, sometimes what you'll do is you'll drop either thunderbolt or ice beam. I typically drop thunderbolt uh, for eerie impulse. And eerie impulse is a phenomenal move because it just allows you to uh, cut the damage output from whatever you want. And that's just like super good in this gen. As a normal type, resisting, not resisting, but like being immune to Fluttermane Shadow Ball is like really big. It also has really good special bulk. So I would imagine like Sassy Porygon 2 would be like the standard for this generation. You know, you can hit like the, you can hit whatever bump you want. I'm not going to keep doing that every time I do this. But yeah, you run like zero speed, a decent amount of special attack. You get like that download boost and then you just, you know, go to town. You set up trick room for things. Uh, you go for recovers, you wall things out. Honestly, like, here's the thing. The less Cresselia I see, because there's a lot less Cresselia nowadays. Um, it just seems to have fallen off a bit. Um, the better I think Porygon 2 is going to be. Cresselia has been, it's not outclassed by Porygon 2, but it now has a niche over it with, um, what's it called? Lunar Blessing, being able to heal its partners of like all status and stuff. Uh, and like the ability for Cresselia to run like safety goggles and not be spored is also pretty big. But Porygon 2, it's a normal type. It's only weak to fighting. So any Terra type that isn't also weak to fighting is an improvement for it. Terra Poison is like one of the best Terras for it because it just becomes a hard wall to flutter main and also uh, resist fighting moves then. But also you can run Terra Grass, which means you're going to be immune to powder moves and stuff. Though you do gain more weaknesses, which might defeat the, uh, the purpose of Porygon 2. So I probably think that like Terra Poison is actually the best one. Uh, but that's my thoughts on this guy. Really cool dude. Porygon Z. Very, very underrated, but also not that important of a Pokemon in previous generations. In Dynamax, it was great, but only when, you know, we lost access to other Pokemon uh, in Series 6, when they, like, banned the top 10 Pokemon. Awful format, by the way. Porygon Z was unbearable to play against. Um, but in this generation, it has access to adaptability, Terra Blast. Porygon Z technically does not have to run a normal move. It has an 80 base power normal move that it can click whenever it wants and is decent damage. Uh, try attack is also 80 base power. So technically the same thing. Uh, however, now it can also change its type and get adaptability on that. This is terrifying because it can be whatever it wants. I think that Porygon Z is a very scary fairy type because you have Terra Blast, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Protect, and you slap a life orb on this guy, and now you're hitting things with 135 special attack adaptability. You can also run Hyper Beam, by the way. Hyper Beam's also a great move on this guy, because you just nuke everything. Timmy Nature. And it's just it's just a nuke. It, it becomes literally just a nuke. Scary Pokemon. Not excited to face it, but it, it can be like really cool, and there's definitely gonna be a lot of awesome teams revolving around it. Kingdra. Uh, Kingdra is the Swift Swim user that uh, we deserve. I like Kingdra. Kingdra is a Pokemon that I think pairs well with a lot of my favorites. Uh, it's Politoed's best friend. It's also Pelipper's best friend. It really only does one thing. It does like Muddy Water Spam, Draco Meteor, uh, Protects, and Ice Beam. But now it also gets Hurricane, so that's pretty big. Uh, as for like a Terra type, it already only has one weakness in Fairy. So Poison probably is going to be like the, the best one for it. Uh, you could also do Steel, I guess. Steel actually wouldn't be bad. I think you would want to go Steel now that I think about it. Just because it makes it so you lose the Fire Weakness in Rain. So that could be pretty big. Um, and yeah, even though it only has like 95 special attack and 85 speed, 85 is still like a speed tier that we don't hit on good special attacking uh, Swift Swim users that much. Like take, for example, Ludicolo, which has to invest so much speed to outspeed anything this gen. Actually, let me see something. Um, if you go Timid Nature level 50, can you outspeed Iron Bundle when it has plus one? Because it has plus one from the um, boost strategy. 150 Iron Bundle hits 309. Yes, you do outspeed Iron Bundle by one point. So this is gonna be a good Pokemon. <laughs> it just it, it has to be now. Uh okay. Bastiodon. Awful Pokemon. But only because of its typing. Terra could actually make this guy pretty decent. Because it does. Oh, it doesn't get body press. Never mind. I'm sad. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're down to our last couple of Pokemon here that I, I think are notable. Rampardos, I just threw on there because his buddy was on the list too. All right. Exodrill. Exodrill is huge. Sand teams have fallen off quite a bit. However, we are still not in restricted format, so they still have a shot. Here's how Exodrill can win. It's 135 base attack. It has access to Sand Rush. The only good Sand Rush user we had before was like Lycanroc, and if you're me and Coping, Houndstone. 
Now we have a Pokemon with good special defense that can run phenomenal items introduced this gen, like the Clear Amulet, or you can even just run like Assault Vest. And now you have a very threatening Pokemon with um, a good speed tier at 88. It means that with Sand Rush active, it outspeeds basically everything, even with like very little investment. That being said, you still probably want to outrun like Urshifu um, with like a Choice Scarf and stuff. Uh, so you have to be careful about that. But no, like it, it's actually like just like a really scary Pokemon this gen. I think you would run like Terra Water or Terra Grass. Probably Terra Water. And now you have a Pokemon with access to like Swords Dance, High Horsepower, Rock Slide, uh, Iron Head. It's got really, really high HP for some reason, 110. And even though it has low special defense, the Assault Vest sets, you wouldn't run Sword Dance Assault Vest, by the way. I just threw that on there. Um, even though it has like really high HP and low special defense, the Assault Vest makes up for that, meaning that it doesn't actually take as much from Fluttermane as you would think, especially after the resist. So this is actually a really decent sand Pokemon that I'm really excited to see introduced into the game. And also has Mold Breaker, not that there are any like good Levitate Pokemon running around, you know, not like Rotom is everywhere, um, but that is also an option it has, so keep that in mind. Uh, Reuniclus. Uh, I threw this on there because Reuniclus is just like a really cool Magic Guard Pokemon. I like it quite a bit. I like Life Orb Reuniclus. Um... It's also slower than Arm Rouge, and it's probably going to get Expanding Force because it had it before. So you could do like Trick Room Expanding Force, uh, Magic Guard, Life Orb stuff. You can also do uh, Overcoat to make yourself immune to Amoongus Spores, and you also have Regenerator if you really want to. But I think that like Reuniclus is a Pokemon that benefits a lot from Fairy Terra type. Does it get Dazzling Gleam? It doesn't. No. I really hope it does though. Uh, Terra Blast, you know, the usual. Cool Pokemon. Cool Pokemon. Araquanid is a Pokemon that I really, really want to use. Uh, there are a ton of great items for it this gen. Assault Vest, Clear Amulet is honestly one of the best, I think. Just because it, it, the biggest issue with Araquanid is that even though Water Bubble doubles its power on water moves, you still have to keep in mind that Intimidate, it only has 70 attack, right? 70 attack's like super low, if you really think about it. Um, an Intimidate will make it so things start living liquidation. Uh, a lot better than they would otherwise. So uh, Arachna can now run like Clear Amulet, Liquidation. Um, it would usually run Leech Life, even though it doesn't get like too much damage off of that. Um, and yeah, no, it's just like a really solid Pokemon. Assault Vest was another thing that you would see. You would see like Liquidation, Leech Life. Um, you could run Scald if you really wanted to. I doubt it'll get Scald this gen. Uh, Poison Jab, and then the last move was usually Filler. Ice Beam was like a decent option uh, if you just wanted to like hit like a times four Pokemon, like a dragon type with that. That was an option that you had. It has low special attack, but like, you know, it's just a thing that you could do. I'm trying to think, what was that fourth move people used to run? Huh. I guess it would just be Scald, wouldn't it? Oh, it was Crunch. I'm so stupid. No, but it didn't even hit that hard. Like it's a really, really weak Pokemon without its ability. However, that like 132 special defense, 92 defense with max HP and Assault Vest, it's a scary dude. I think you would just go Terra Water because then it hits like a Palafin, dude. Like Mystic Water, Terra Water, Water Bubble. How many How many boosts is that? That's 1.2 times 2 times 1.5. So let me do this math. Hold on. 1.2 times 2. That's 1. Uh, that's uh, it's 2.4 um, times 1.5. That's that's 3.6. Yeah, that's 3.6. And then you also have the adaptability from, you know, that. So you actually get rid of the 1.5. So it's actually 2.4 times 2. That's 4.8. That's 4.8 times in your water moves. That's insane, right? I did the math right. Hold on. We're doing math on camera again. 1.2 times 2 from water bottle. It's 2.4. The stab turns into times 2. Yeah, it's, it's 4.8. That is absurd. That's almost a 5 times multiplier on a liquidation. Nothing lives that. Nothing. <laughs> I don't care how low your attack set is. You just have a nuke. Comfey. Uh, cool Pokemon. Triage. Gives it priority on healing moves. So... It did have access to a move called Floral Healing. This was basically just like Heal Pulse. Um, it really is just Heal Pulse, isn't it? Just without the Pulse effect. Okay. It was also a pretty decent Trick Room Setter. That was the main reason you would run it. Um, but it also has some pretty interesting tools like Calm Mind, Drain, and Kiss. Um, you know, it's a Fairy type. You can Terra into something that just resists like Steel and Poison. So I guess like Steel. Citrus Berry was a decent item. Leftovers, whatever. Uh, you typically just run it pretty bulky. It wasn't an attacker. It was just meant to be like a, a really cool cleric Pokemon. But yeah. Minior. I don't think it's going to be good, but I, I really like Minior. I would recommend Focus Sash. 
Um, Shell Smash, Rock Slide. Not Rock Pulse, Rock Slide. That's probably your best bet. Probably Terra Ghost too. Actually, you could do like Terra Ghost Clear Amulet. It's it's kind of hard to like one shot this guy without a super effective move. So if you if there isn't a super effective move on the field, because it, it starts off in a different form right as 100 100 defense, and then when you go below 50% HP, uh, you go into your offensive mode. So you can Shell Smash reliably in front of things. I don't know. You could do that. Lunala is another Pokemon that's uh, been confirmed via data mine as well as Solgaleo. Um, I don't want to go too much into these guys because we're not in a restricted format yet. Uh, but Shadow Shield, Trick Room, Lunala does Lunala things. Solgaleo, it does Solgaleo things. Choice Band, Life Orb, all those are great items for it. But yeah, um, those are just like some really notable Pokemon I, I saw that were returning in the DLC. I wanted to talk about them, give my thoughts on how they worked in or how they would work in a Terra format um, and how good I think they would be. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, you know, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you in the next video. And also, you know, just let me know your thoughts down below. See ya.